105 verses 1 to 6 Give thanks to the Lord Call on His name Make known among the nations what He has done Sing to Him Sing praise to Him Tell of all His wonderful acts Glory in His holy name Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice Look to the Lord and His strength Seek His face always Remember the wonders He has done His miracles and the judgments He pronounced O descendants of Abraham, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. Let us sing our hymn of adoration to God be the glory. with confidence in your good news that you love us as a parent love their children that your mercy is boundless and generous that you beckon us always and we will wait forever as we find our way back to you open our hearts to receive your compassion and then show us how to forgive so that we may be vessels of resurrection hope in our troubled world in Jesus name Amen
Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Even though I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with thee. Let us sing our prayer song, You are my hiding place. pray. Blessed Father, we are grateful and thankful unto thee, O God, for this wonderful morning. Thank you, Lord, for your continued presence upon our lives. Thank you for the added opportunity, added privileges, and the opportunity to enjoy life at its fullest once again. The privilege, Lord, to feel your presence, the privilege to worship you, in spirit and in truth being blessed with your presence be, being blessed with life and being blessed and the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth this morning and being blessed with a family and loved ones so lord in all these things we just praise and thank you and lord we pray whatever things that causes us to be unworthy before thee we continually humbly ask for forgiveness and grant not only forgiveness grant that through the power of your holy spirit grant to us a repentant heart that lord we will continue we will enjoy what you promise that if anyone is in christ he is a new creation so lord in the name of jesus uh clothe us uh, with the righteousness of jesus and make us worthy to present to you our prayers our requests as it is written in your word, we need not to be anxious of anything, but by prayer with thanksgiving, we are to present our request before thee. And Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, I pray for the leaders of this nation, from the president down to the lowest position. Grant, Lord, uh, your direction. Grant them the wisdom, the knowledge in managing this nation. Grant them also a godly fear in their hearts, O God, that they will rule this nation with righteousness, with holiness, and in obedience to your commands. And grant, Lord, even as this nation is facing uh, with the pandemic, I pray, good Father, na hatagan mo sila sang langit nun nga kaalam what to do on this present circumstance. So, Lord, help them. 
help us, we pray, as we continue to battle this pandemic and grant, Lord, that on your perfect time, grant us the victory. And I pray, dear Father, even for the leaders of this church, continue to grant them the wisdom, grant them the fire in serving the Lord. Use them mightily, O God, for your greater glory and greater honor. And use the leaders of this church, O God, to continually direct uh, this church in accordance to your will. And we pray, even Father, for the individual members of this church. May you keep the fire burning in us. Grant us the excitement, the joy, and enable us, even Abba Father, to be a good steward in the task that you have given us. Grant, Lord, that you will uh, prosper the works of our hands. Bless uh, us, O God, and make us a blessing, not only to ourselves, to our family, to our loved ones, but to the people around us. Allow, Lord, that as you have called us to this ministry, use us mightily, O God, as a channel of blessing, a channel of salvation. Remember also the faithful of this church, um, even, Father, our vision partners, that even though, Lord, hindi sila members sa Sininga Simbahan, they have been of help to us. Remember their prayers, their petition, and grant, Lord, uh, that you will bless them marvelously, abundantly, above all things that they can ask for. So, Lord, bless the ministry of this church. We know, Lord, that it's not through our strength, but it's by your power. Be at move and allow, Lord, allow, O God, that your Holy Spirit will be at move mightily upon the individual members of this church. So, Lord, into your hands, we commit to you this ministry. Uh, grant, Lord, na himoon mo kami nga mabungahon and effective in all the tasks that you have given us. Empower, O, o God, all of us with thy Holy Spirit and make us, Lord, a living testimony of how good and how great you are. Bless our worship service this morning and even a worship uh, celebration tonight. And grant, Lord, that in all these things you will be honored and be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. For our scripture text this morning, Makita sa Psalm 86, verse 11. It says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Let us pray. O God Almighty, we thank you for this wonderful privilege that you have given us to listen to your words. Open our spiritual ears, O God, and even our hearts that we may be able to understand and what you want us to learn this morning. Speak to your servant, I pray, and grant, O Lord, that you will make these uh, words of yours a blessing to us all and enable us also, Abba Father, to apply all the things that we're about to learn this morning. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, we will be talking about the undivided heart. Kumusta ang atong tagipusoon mga utod? Ang atong text nagahambal, Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Amuni ang pangamuyo ni David. So the first speaks of my need. The second speaks of my desire because my heart is so often divided I need the Lord to unite it somehow so that I might worship him with nothing held back that is the situation many of us face right now our hearts are fragmented because we are pulled in so many directions at once in order to get some practical help in this area let's start with a very basic question what are the marks of a divided heart Heart. First, constant indecision is a type of person who is unable to commit to anything outside of himself. He jumps from one relationship to another, job to another, friendship to another, church to another, promise to another. 
never staying in one place long enough to make anything stick a kind of person who deeply fears making a commitment so ini ang klase nga tao nga wala commitment and this situation remind us in first chronicles chapter 12 verse 33 wherein the warriors from the tribe of Zebulun they are described as experienced soldiers prepared for battle with every type of weapon to help David with undivided loyalty. Here, makita natin uh, a great host of trained soldiers who came to David ready to fight. They showed up in full battle gear, shield and spears, and most ready to go to battle at a moment's notice. But that is not their finest quality. May much better to be said about them. They were men of undivided loyalty, not double-hearted, not partly for Saul and partly for David, but having made their choice. It was one heart all the time, nothing held back. These men said, David, we are all in. Where you lead, we will follow, says the word, and we will go into battle. We serve at your command and only at your command. And we can remember them not for their military ability, which must have been great, but for their hearts. They were not double-hearted. They were in all the way. They are fully committed. Now, there is a second characteristic of a divided heart. The second is divided priorities. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus told a parable about a man who went out to sow seed. Some fell on the path, some on the stony ground, some among the thorns, and some on the good ground. When Jesus explained the parable, he said that the four soils represented four responses to the message of the kingdom. Now let's focus on the seed sown among the thorns. Here is that part of the parable, Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. It says, other seed fell among thorns, which grow up and choke the plants. And this is the explanation in Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. So in this parable, Jesus mentions two particular kinds of weeds. The first, the worries of this life. This refers to any consuming concerns in your life that catches all your attention. And it could be something that in itself not bad, such as a genuine concern for your job, or your health, or your personal financial situation. It could be a relationship that takes up all your waking moments. It could be a family issue that keeps you tossing and turning at night. The second, there is the deceitfulness of wealth. Again, we all understand this. Money is addictive. The more you have, the more you want. Just like the story of a rich man. When, he, when would you stop working so hard? And he replied, when I have enough money. Ang pamangkot, how much is enough? Just one more peso. That is the deceitfulness of riches. And it's just a temptation to the rich. The love of money comes to all of us. Seduces us, whispers to us over and over again. If only you had a little bit more, you would be happy. These problems, trials, and difficulties can choke up God's work and leave us spiritually anemic. Many times, uh, nag-share ko sa itong uh, mga young people, no? uh, don't forget this time. During most of us, uh, estudyante pa, we have a lot of time for the ministry. Pero kung may young adults na gani, may trabaho na, lain na ang ilang uh, priorities. So, amo na nga maghalong gig kita. Because uh, uh, the money, ma maintoan kita, Mahimo na natin siyang a master. Now, there is a third sign of a divided heart. Third and clear identity. When the heart is divided, you won't know who you really are. 
You can't decide what team you're on. You don't know what uniform to put on. You act single even though you are married. You are like the proverbial chameleon, changing your colors so you will always blend in. Do you know who you are? Until you do, you'll never really know where you fit in. That was the secret to Daniel's greatness. He knew who he was. Even in Babylon, hundreds of miles from Jerusalem, taken away from his homeland, forcibly marched across the desert to the pagan city of Babylon. There he was enrolled in a school he did not choose, learning a language that was not his own, absorbing a culture both foreign and utterly pagan, being trained to serve in the Babylon court. Then he was given a pagan name. The name Daniel means God is my judge, which tells us that he was raised in a godly home. While the Babylonian called him Belteshazzar, which means something like Bel, protect his life. It was a prayer in a pagan deity. To all of these changes, he either gave his approval or at least he did not actively protest. In the case of the deportation to Babylon, well, that's a choice. He and his friends were captured and taken by the Babylonians against their will. When they arrived in Babylon, he and his friends were put in a three-year all-expenses-paid training program. Without doubt, it was great honor to be chosen to serve the Babylonian king. Part of the training involved eating at the king's table. The king always eats well. They give him the best of the best. So to eat at the king's table meant the best food, expertly prepared, served with the best wines. It meant eating well every day. It was the best the world has to offer. Kag makita naton ang response ni David. Ni Daniel, I mean. He said, no. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Daniel resolved, that means he's determined not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. You can only do this when you have an undivided heart. You know the rest of the story. Daniel and friends ate vegetables and water for 10 days. They ended up looking healthier and stronger than those who ate at the king's table and as a result they were recognized and rewarded by the king himself what a good story and what a happy ending the question where did daniel find the strength to say no to the food from the king's table the answer is simple daniel knew who he was so he knew where to draw the line Daniel never forgot who he was and he never forgot where he came from. It was as if he was saying, I may look Babylonian on the outside, but I am 100% Jewish on the inside. Now, this teaches us that you can corrupt a man from the outside. You can change a culture, but not a character. You can change his name, but not his nature. Daniel may have looked like a pagan, but on the inside, he was a servant of the living God. Even the mighty Nebuchadnezzar could do nothing about that. We live in a world where biblical values are constantly under attack. We won't change the world's way of thinking anytime soon. When you know who you are, you can serve Christ anywhere. And the reverse is also true when you are unclear about who you really are. You will struggle to serve Christ anywhere. A man with a divided heart cannot grasp his true identity. He will be pulled this way and that. But the man with an undivided heart knows who he is because he knows who he is. He doesn't have to constantly make decisions. Once you make up your mind, life becomes simpler, though not always easier. And that brings us back to the beginning, back to Psalm 86 verse 11. The prayer of David, unite my heart to fear your name and put me together, Lord. Tandaan ta, a man of divided heart is weak. The man of one object is the man and we mean he is a man of one purpose. 
the man we admire and want to follow. And such a man is the man. So in closing, we all have a divided heart. That's why David prayed this prayer. He looked within and saw his heart pulled in a hundred directions. So he prayed, Unite my heart, O Lord. We run low on love. We find ourselves distracted, worried, and easily confused. We fall prey to little temptations that lead to bigger ones. We marinate in hate. We delay in our duties. We make excuses for every failure. We find ourselves both disagreeing and disagreeable. We love the world more than we love God. We live in unbelief instead of walking in faith. We refuse to submit because our pride is at stake. And so it goes the struggle of the soul to find rest and peace. No wonder we are living a prostrated life. When the heart is not united, nothing works right. Without God, we will be fragmented and torn and pulled and distracted. A prayer for a united heart. We must do as David did. We must pray, O Lord, take the scattered fragments of my heart and unite them so that I may praise you. Only God can do this. But God can do it if we will come to him in humility and sincerity. The hardest part is coming until you admit you need God's help. You will be stuck exactly where you are. Simply lang din, surrender your life to God because He is the only one who knows what is best for you. Amen. A blessed morning everyone. Kumusta na kamo mga utod? Let's continue to pray na mag maayo na kita this coming October kag magkakita ay naman kita eye to eye face to face and for our announcement this morning ang nabilin nga celebrant si Paul Caesar Absin this coming September 29 happy happy birthday and for the rest of the announcement the details sa atong mga financial report ara gid sa atong messenger uh, Natawag nyo lang. In closing, let us sing our closing hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us.
what we hear this morning. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege to worship you, the privilege, O oh God, of being blessed with your word and being blessed with your continued presence upon our lives that as we end, O oh God, this worship service, it is our prayer, Lord, as we are about to face another week, go with us, continue to hide us under the shadow of your wings, shelter us in your holy presence, and in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, cover us all with the precious blood of Jesus. Protect us, O God, we pray, and whatever works of the enemy upon us, let it not prevail, but instead, let your perfect will be done accordingly upon each of us. O God Almighty, let our light shine before men, that they may see our good deeds, and it will glorify you, our Father, who art in heaven. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the continued presence of the Holy Spirit be with you, and remains with you. Amen and Amen. Amen.